Hello friends, uh, welcome back to the video series on design of steel structural elements. Now in this problem, uh, we will see how to find out the design axial load capacity of a column which is made up of four angles, right? Now the problem description is, a column square in cross section, that is in plan, of uh, side 360 millimeters, means each side of the column is 360 mm, consists of four angles ISA 80 by 80 by 10, right? It means it is consisting of four angles ISA 80 by 80 by 10 at each corner with a suitable lacing. Now these columns are placed at each corner of the column with some suitable lacing is there that will not bother. But uh, the, the thing is these all these four angles are uh, held together. Now find the load carrying capacity of the column if the height of the column is 5 meters and effectively held in position at both ends but not restrained against direction. Right? We will see what is the meaning of this sentence. So now uh, I will just explain you how the column is. Now these are the four angles ISA 80 by 80 by 10. Each angle is ISA 80 by 80 by 10 and each angle is placed at the corner of the column. Uh, the column size is 360 mm by 360 mm. Right? Now each leg is 80 mm and 80 mm. So the left out part will be 200. Right? Because 200 plus 160 will be 360. Now uh, this uh, blue color axis are actually called the global xx and global yy axis and this is the actually cg of the whole channel together now the green color axis are the local xx and local yy axis and this small g is represents the local cg of that angle right this we require usually we we, we need this thing to find out actually the minimum radius of gyration okay so we'll start uh, by writing the formula to find the uh, design actual load capacity that is pd is equal to FCD into A, right? This is the formula to find the design actual load capacity. Now, A is actually the effective cross section area of this whole com whole column, which is nothing but four times the cross section area of each angle. That we can get from the steel table. So I will just open the angle uh, for which we need to find. So ISA 80 by 80 by 10 which is an equal angle. Okay, I think it must be in the next page. Right. Okay, ISA 80 by 80 by 10. Right. So 15 point means 1505 millimeter square. So this comes out to be 4 times 1505. 6020 6020 mm square a is 6020 mm square now to find fcd okay now to find fcd we need two things the first thing is the buckling class Yeah, uh, the buckling class in which the angle falls. The I know from the steel IS800 angles, channels, T sections, and uh, solid sections fall under buckling class C. Now the next thing what I need is actually KL by R. KL by R minimum. So now to find K, the last sentence will be useful, right? So if it is effectively held in position at both ends but not restrained against direction, right? the meaning of this will be like if this is the column okay so I am holding this column effectively holding this column at both ends right but I am not restraining this column to from direction root from rotation it means that this column can easily rotate on at the support it means it can bend like this so it means it is pin and pin connection so from is 800 we know that for this configuration k will be 1 so kl is actually 1 times the length of the column is 5 meters that is 5000 right next i want the value of r minimum which is the main thing in this uh, problem right so r minimum is actually R minimum is actually under the root 
i minimum by a right and i minimum is actually minimum of global i x x and global i y y whichever is minimum that i have to take divided by the total cross section area now i need to find i x x and i y y now since the uh, this section is symmetrical both about x x and y y axis so i x x will be equal to i y y so i will be required to find only i x x or i y y so let me find i x x here right so i will use the parallel axis theorem that is i g plus a d square this four i am multiplying because there are four angles right each from each angle i am taking the contribution from each and every angle so that's why i am multi multiplying it by four okay now now what happens four times okay the moment of inertia of this angle about local xx axis that i need to find so how much is that so i say 80 by 80 by 10 and uh, in the next page it will be given right okay i say 80 by 80 by 10 so which is that it is the third one right i say 80 by 80 by 10 yeah third one so i need to find the moment of inertia about i x x both both will be same because it is symmetrical 87.7 .7 into 10 raised to 4 it is 87.7 into 10 raised to 4 ig plus area of each angle is 1505 multiplied by d square now d will be actually the distance of cg of one angle up to the axis on which i am finding moment of inertia means this distance will be actually d this distance will be d but uh, I know this distance which is 100 mm because this from here to here it is 200 so this will be 100 but I don't know this distance so that distance is actually given in the steel table as uh, cxx okay so that is given as cxx so I say 80 by 80 by 10 so cxx and cyy both are same so okay uh, I need to find this distance right it means I need to actually find this 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 one so which is given as EXX equal to EYY so which is 56.6 millimeters it means this distance is 56.6 which is actually EXX of that angle so it is 56.6 plus 100 which is 156.6 square ig plus ad square that is four times right so i am getting ixx as something around let me just calculate that 87.7 10 raised to 4 plus 1505 256.6 square so this whole thing should be multiplied by 4 so i am getting 151.13 so it is 151.13 into 10 raised to 6 millimeter raised to 4 so this has to substitute here I have to substitute here to get the value of R minimum that is 151.13 into 10 raised to 6 divided by the total area is how much total area is 6020 so this divided by 6020 okay and so 158.44 right uh, so it is so this I am getting to be so 5000 divided by 158.44 so 31.55 this as KL by RS 31.55 okay I have to now see the table 9c uh, 30 uh, 1.55 which lies between 30 and 40 so for 30 it is 211 so for 40 it is 198 just use this interpolation table so for 30 it is for 30 just check 
for 30 it is 211 211 and for uh, 40 it is 198 and I want for 31.55 Yeah, it is 209 therefore <coughs> FCD is 209 Newton per millimeter square therefore the design axial load capacity is 209 multiplied by the effective cross section area which is 6020 so 209 multiplied by 6020 so I am getting 1259 kilonewton sorry 1258 kilonewton so this is how uh, this problem can be tackled the only main important pr thing in this problem is finding IXX once you are able to find this comfortably you further things are very easy hope you understood so we'll so uh, we'll see some more videos in the next right till then thank you bye